India and China are both vying to become significant players in the global semiconductor industry. But India lags well behind its competitors when it comes to manufacturing, but has certainly emerged as a leader in chip design. So to discuss semiconductor competition, India's chip ambitions and Taiwan's role in its ecosystem, we are joined by Ashwini Kumar, a researcher at the National Chengchi University's Taiwan Center for Security Studies in Taipei, and Sunil Ji Acharya from Bengaluru in southern India's Karnataka state. Thank you both so much for uh, being part of the program again. Ashwini, uh, what, is, what is the significance of India um, manufacturing its own chips? Or how important is it for India in, in the international space to be manufacturing its own and the chips that it designs itself? So one of the important things, why India needs its own uh, chip manufacturing is that we have seen during the COVID pandemic, there was like this disruption of chip and chip shortage, and also like a current dynamic geopolitical aspect between US and China tech competition. So all this like structural issues can contribute to um, contribute to the biggest India's uh, emergence of the foundry business. And also another thing is that the since India market is emerging, India needs more chip. So it is much better to have like domestic uh, domestic manufactured chip. So in terms of the market demands and also the current uncertain geopolitical dynamics, so it is very important for the na national security and also for the economic security of India. So I think that these are the main uh, main reason that India needs to have its own in, in own chips. Okay, Bef before we break down uh, some of those factors that you put in there, especially uh, the idea of national security, I want to go to you, Sunil. What do we know of, of uh, how many companies, uh, design companies, are manufacturing their chips in Taiwan? I don't have the exact number, but uh, you know, I would expect that the homegrown chips would be less than 100. I don't think it would be more than that at this point in time. Uh, however, uh, if they are working or doing design services, there may be more companies. Uh, in terms of, uh, let me give you the idea around, we import more than 90% of our semiconductors into India. So to Ashwini's point earlier, uh, both from the uh, perspective of, uh, I would say supply chain resilience, and also for strategic reasons, uh, it is becoming critical for India, and not just India, I guess globally, uh, several countries are looking to uh, revamp their semiconductor manufacturing capabilities. So the answer to your question is homegrown, I would say India branded company, branded companies would be less than 100, not more. In fact, uh, even the Ministry of Electronics and IT, I think, recognizes that number. And that's one of the reasons why uh, they would like the you know DLI scheme and other incentives to encourage uh, companies to start designing their own chips. The focus now will be on creating products. When we say products, it means an India chip with an Indian brand, which we have not had, uh, like I said, more than 100 in all these years. So uh, I would think that that would be the uh, number approximately. Okay, so uh, while, while we're speaking of numbers, let's take a look at some figures published by the world's leading consulting firm, Boston Consulting Group. The 2024 data states that 19% of the world's chip designers are in India, but the country is just home to 7% of the globe's chip designing facilities. Now, in comparison, China has 28% of the world's chip designers with 12% of the designing facilities. The U.S., though, is leading the way with chip designers at 32% while offering 27% of the global chip designing facilities. Ashwini, I, I feel like you wanted to jump in uh, on uh, Sunil's uh, earlier comment there. Uh, can you tie that in with what, with these figures we've seen here? Yeah, uh, actually, I want to add on one major point is that why, uh, like right now, what India is focusing on manufacturing chip is that when we see the history of India's like uh, development, we see that India actually, uh, backbone of Indian economy is actually agriculture. And then over the time, it actually moved from agriculture to uh, service sector. So there was a huge gap in the manufacturing sector in Indian uh, economy. So that, that is a major point that India wanted to focus on strengthening the manufacturing aspect. That, that is, that's the point I wanted to add on. So right now, like made in uh, India, all this um, policies actually focusing on strengthening the manufacturing capabilities inside the India. So when we look at the uh, chart just now we mentioned, so India is like behind uh, US and China, but when we see the designing capabilities, like like I mentioned, like they already have a strong um, 
they already have a strong software ability. So now they are like looking back and then try to fill up the manufacturing capability. So India is actually in a right path to fill in the gap. So soon, uh, like setting up the semiconductor uh, company, it will take long time. It, it wouldn't happen in one or two years. So it will take some time, but then India is on the right track to fill in the gap between the manufacturing capability and software capability. Uh, so, so now on that note then, what is India doing to fill in that gap? I mean, right now, as we see, it lags behind China, even though they both lead in the global chip designing papers and publications. But where where is that shortfall there? And given India's software strength, how do you see it making up that shortfall? I think uh, to Ashwini's point, you know, manufacturing in the semiconductor space is a completely capex intensive uh, you know, sector where you know you have to make huge amounts of capital investment both on the equipment and also the infrastructure that is necessary. Uh, traditionally, China has been making those investments. Even if you look at the movement of uh, you know manufacturing from Japan or the U.S., a lot of that got moved and concentrated into China. And there are various reasons for it, uh, which I will not get into right now. But uh, now, in terms of where India is, I think uh, India has recognized the strategic importance of having semiconductor manufacturing within the country. The reason, I, like I said, more than 90% of our semiconductors today are imported, which is not necessarily, uh, I would say, a supply chain reliability uh, point from a point of view, a good thing. Uh, so uh, they have recognized the strategic intent. However, let us understand that uh, this is more strategic. Manufacturing is more strategic to fill in the gap. It's not necessarily uh, uh, something that a business perspective uh, would make a lot of sense. For example, it will it will take five to seven years for India to start do you know getting into wafer manufacturing. However, the approach India is taking to fill in the gap to answer your question is first to look at low hanging fruit, which is predominantly packaging, uh, semiconductor packaging, and that's the uh, packaging units are coming up, which take lesser time to set up, let lesser capital intensive, but uh, you know lesser time to market. So. The focus that India is taking is, first of all, let us look at uh, let's say semiconductor packaging, then eventually move to uh, wafer manufacturing, which is basically looking at higher investment. And the government is uh, ensuring that there is adequate financial support and incentives for large players, both uh, domestic and international, to partner to establish this manufacturing capability. So the fill in the blanks is being done by a strategic approach, firstly, to ensure that Packaging is available in the country so we can get wafers that we have designed and got manufactured maybe in Taiwan or Korea or anywhere else, and then start doing the packaging. So we start slowly moving up the value chain. Post that, we are also looking at uh, establishment of these wafer fabs, which is both CMOS uh, fabs, and the new sector where no one really has an edge is in the compound semiconductor space which is the uh, gallium nitride and silicon carbide. Uh, currently, the only country which is looking strong, uh, interestingly, is China. Globally, we were thinking about China as just a manufacturing hub. Uh, uh, basically, that you know most of the designs came from elsewhere. But today, I think China has started establishing itself as a strong player, even in the compound semiconductor space, specifically silicon carbide, SIC. And uh, there is a lot of technology that they have. So. Uh, since this is a new technology, uh, some amount of investment in the manufacturing research process for gallium nitrate and comp uh, silicon carbide is being done in India and also uh, focus on newer materials uh, which could be used, which actually helps us reduce the gap because then everyone's starting from around the same point. So uh, we do have a strategy. Uh, I think um, it will play over the next couple of years or maybe I would say at least in the next five years. It'll take that much amount of time to see these gaps getting filled. You know, you both mentioned that it will take, it, it's, it's the long game when, we, when it comes to manufacturing. So what can India do right now, especially, you know, to, to ramp up its design capabilities or, uh, you know, be, be more competitive in design with the help of Taiwan? Is there something that, that can happen right there in, in terms of partnership, Ashwini? Okay. So uh, for that question, I feel like Indian uh, startup companies or Indian fabulous company, they can focus on the mature nodes. They don't have to compete on the market with the advanced uh, advanced nodes because uh, they should identify what markets need so that the uh, most of the market segments, they don't 
uh, necessarily need the high end ships so that they can focus on the cost cost efficient and design efficient and time to market strategy so that is the most important thing that the uh, in indian companies can focus on and also um, they can leverage uh, taiwan's uh, entire ecosystem because when we see in taiwan it's not just about the foundry taiwan as or as the whole ent entire ecosystem in this in this land so that they can make use of that so india can what i am trying to say is that india can focus particularly on targeted focus on particular sector so they can focus on um, iot or the, AOT. So now, I mean, w one thing is clear, uh, whatever's designed in India currently has to be manufactured overseas. And I want to, you know, you, you have a lot, you, you, work, you operate on the intergovernmental level. And so I want to understand the kind of security risks involved in that, you know, starting from IP, perhaps, you know, uh, the, the risk to the IP to intellectual property. Uh, is there, are there conversations about that right now that is trying to speed up the, uh, the, the process of India manufacturing its own chips? Uh, for the strategic sector, we already have the capability, although they may not be at the latest nodes. Uh, we have the semiconductor laboratory based out of Chandigarh, which has been manufacturing chips and we have been using it in our space program. India has a very advanced space program, as you know, compared to the rest of the world. So we are capable of launching highly technical uh, space related uh, technologies. We launch satellites for several countries uh, and uh, we also have a very robust uh, you know, defense program. We are one of the, I think, top 20 defense uh, exporters in the world. Uh, so uh, we use some of our own chips into these critical products and even in critical infrastructure. Uh, in terms of the question around security, uh, I think so far globally, uh, you know, some of the manufacturing plants in Taiwan also have been manufacturing for uh, very large organized countries like the US. Uh, so right now, uh, as, as of this point in time, uh, without naming the country, since most of the manufacturing is happening in Taiwan, uh, it is not a very uh, red flag because there are ways in which IT can be protected. Uh, however, the intent, of course, for any country in the world would be uh, to have most of their critical manufacturing and security uh, sensitive items to be done within the country. Uh, or the other strategy that most of us are using today is basically to have trusted partners. And uh, this is the other point where Taiwan can play a role of being a trusted partner in the ecosystem. Uh, We've also looked at the quad arrangements which have happened between the US, Israel, India, Australia, where trusted partners are going to start playing a larger role in semiconductors. But uh, if there is one takeaway for India, perhaps, Ashwini, that Taiwan is doing that you've uh, observed that you feel like India could incorporate as it plants its long road ahead for its semiconductor industry and its ambitions, what should it be? So I feel like the first thing India can focus is that it is good to have a manufacturing sector in, in, in India, but also when it comes to the, the strategic aspect, India should focus on what it's already have the comparative advantage. That is most important. So I feel like the manufacturing sector could be like an add-on point for India, but they could focus more on design capability so that it will be more stable for that. And also one thing is like, uh, whenever whenever there is a huge uh, investment in semiconductor industry, it takes long time because uh, the most important thing is that, like the sir men mentioned, it is like a trust-based relationship. So when we look at the entire semiconductor supply chain, and everything is based on the trust base. So India could actually Indian companies can exert how they can be reliable and trustworthy when it comes to integrate into the supply chain. So that is most thing that in India can focus on creating a trustworthy and resilient supply chain. All right. On trust, we shall end this uh, conversation. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Thank you so much, Ashwini Kumar, researcher at the Taiwan Center for Security Studies in National Chengchi University in Taipei, and Sunil G. Acharya, a senior consultant with Semiconductor Fabulous Accelerator Lab in Bengaluru in Karnataka State. How long do you think it will take for India to catch up with China's semiconductor industry? Let us know in the comments below. Click the video beside me for a discussion on how Taiwan is contributing to India's semiconductor mission. And if you don't want to miss more stories on tech and business from Taiwan, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell.